put off by how long this video is, don't worry, I try to jam pack my videos with as much content and as much detail as I possibly can. Anything I feel I can comment on and that I feel you might be interested in, I pretty much put in the video. I try not to repeat myself and talk fairly fast. If the video is too long for you, I have recorded a shorter version and the link will be in the description box. Neighbors 2, Sorority Rising. The, the couple, Mac and Kelly, have sold the house and bought a new house in the suburbs. But there is a 30-day waiting period before they actually close on selling the old house. And then a sorority moves in next door to where the fraternity used to live. And yeah, they now have to prevent them from partying loudly for, you know, 30 days. And that gives us, you know, a, a ticking clock stakes. It's not quote unquote just about where they live or the property value lowered and such. Then again, Ted 2 also has stakes. The sorority is trying to be the first sorority in America where they can throw their own parties. Usually they have to go to frat parties and as the founders of this particular sorority realize, those parties are just about, you know, as far as the girls go, it, the idea is just that they go there so that the frat can have sex with them. So, yeah, they're, they just want to throw parties that they actually want to throw. And yet again, the couple are party poopers. I don't know, who would go to a party just to poop? Or is it party in the in the sense of, of like group, sort of like group pooping? I know. The, the term party pooper has nothing to do with that kind of pooping. I'm just 12 years old. And the they, they go on a, a number of larks. They, they pranks, they do a bunch of pranks. And basically, the, the neighbors, both parties, try to wage a war of attrition on the other. And like with the first one, it's very much, you know, it's, it's more of a premise than a plot. Although this one does manage to escalate fairly nicely as it goes. And the end does have res resolution, but some of it is really forced. And it is... Yeah. It's... it's the, the... It doesn't really have the same kind of that the the same conflict that the first does and on account of that it you know the resolution is less about actually closing off a conflict that had been there and more you know the the conflict is not so much thematic anymore it is literally just you know the the couple want to need to, to sell the house in order to afford to move into the new house you know and the the sorority have to establish themselves and that's basically it it's not so yeah the that is what needs to be resolved by the end and like the first one the you know, it doesn't, it isn't really 
going anywhere particularly, but this one really does distract you very nicely from that. You're, you're not really sitting there thinking about, yeah. And it is still kind of sitcom scenarios and the, the set pieces, again, great, memorable, really inspired some of them and the there's there's a lot that this does better or at least different and in a good way than the first one the first without a doubt the first is the better movie and it's only so so good of a movie you know this one is the funny one this one is way way funnier it's it's hilarious almost throughout and you're never just sitting there waiting for the next funny part it's this gains a lot from making a a very making a, a specific decision and making it early on. The first movie had the problem that it was trying to it was trying to take place in the real world. So when when there wasn't really consequences for certain things or you know or they could only go so far because of consequences, you know, this one says screw it this this movie is clearly not taking place in the real world. There is no way because the the things that happen and that people walk away from are just and that is so freeing for it. You do not know what will happen next because it yeah, it's just it's not going to you 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 know, I mean if you know, obviously with this kind of thing, you you do really have to just let let go of the expectation of this you know in in this case if of it being in you know having real world kind of consequences to things and because some of the things that happen in this are just so crazy and so out there and this is so much this is the movie that i thought i would be getting with the first one this is the movie that the trailer is probably well technically I'll get to that, but this is the movie that I thought I would be getting based on the trailers. This is the the type of film. It's it's as crazy and as just yeah. It just the the just the the laughs just keep on coming, and it's just yeah. It's it's yeah. Of course, any comedy has to establish and then more or less live up to some. Some some can get away with some subversion of. Is this the real world? How how much is is it just fantasy? How much consequences there are going to be to certain actions? You know whether it's like Bugs Bunny or. A you know a sitcom or you know no matter what you have to have some consistency to what what can happen and how yeah now like the first it's it's definitely formulaic it is very much worth going to the, the theater for. As a sequel, I don't... You're, you're going to be a little lost if you have not watched the first one. And ultimately, yeah, like if, if you watch, if you, if you watch the trailers for this and or for the thirst first, and you're like, that looks like fun, you know, rent the first one and then go see this one, but you probably shouldn't jump directly into this one because there are a million references to what happened before 
without them actually saying what happened before. And it's you're gonna be so lost if you don't. Yeah. And yeah, the this has such energy. It's it's you're yeah, it's it's never boring. And like the first, it's it's you know ninety-ish minutes. I think eighty-five, not counting the end credits. I did not. I forgot my my notepad. This is complete with the number two pencil, which I actually consider a very good pencil, not at all number two. The where the first one, the really crazy gags only really came in the climax, and there were few considering what the trailer really, you know, the, the, yeah, the sense that I got from watching the trailers. This one, it's, it's throughout, like, there's, like, way early on, there's not a lot, but, you know, the first few scenes, it's just setting up what's, what's going on, who, you know, who are these people, and what's, what kind of situation, but it doesn't take very long before really crazy. Like something, something very crazy does happen within the first twenty or thirty minutes at least, and that's still just we're still just setting up characters. But it's it's yeah, and and part of it is also that it it, it happens so soon that you almost you're you know you're not expecting them to already go to some, but yeah and the the climax itself the in the first one the climax is really great in this one it does kinda just fizzle out there at the end the it's like there's a the actual conflict between the two sides is reaching a climax, but it's not leading to more, excuse me, more funny or, you know, bigger gags or the like. And that does, that is unfortunate. It, you know, you, you can tell that, you know, I, I don't know if like stuff was cut or what, but yeah. For for a comedy and for one so built on, I mean, this is I I I forget who wrote it, but but a reviewer wrote of the first film that it is a celebration of bad behavior of and that really that's that's what these two movies are, and as such, you really expect the ending to be. Just the, you know, where, you know, monocles are popping all over the place. And it's like, this is crazy. This is just, you know, and, you know, stuff stuff that you just, this is not okay to do in, you know, the, the modern civilized world. And that just doesn't really happen here. And that that is too bad. But it's still, there's, there's so much, there are so many great things before that, and I do want to say, as as a couple of other reviewers have pointed out, the the opening of this is a really gross gag. But honestly, after that, some some have said that that kind of sets the tone. Honestly, as as soon as you get past that one, it really, yeah, the the there's there there are other things that are just you know just just offensive and not really funny but the vast majority is just really really funny now in the first one it's really the the couple doing the worst of the you know the really bad things and Honestly, a lot of the way, all of the really bad things, not not all bad things, but all the really bad things, 
in this the sorority do a fair bit of their yeah I, sh I should say for those who don't know in the first it was fraternity not a sorority and the in the first one it's it's you can really tell that there are really no consequences for the couple in this they do a better job of making it even the yeah and something that is a problem in you know in the first one we're kind of meant to sympathize with the couple and you know not you know, not not too much with the fraternity. In the first, you do sympathize with the fraternity. In this, you definitely sympathize with the sorority, and it really is. Yeah, that's that's a problem that both of these movies have, and it, at the end of the day, you know the. You have to explain why, why is this fraternity slash sorority partying so loud? in spite of the fact that they have regular next-door neighbors. You know, you have to explain that, and both films kind of humanize this, you know, major antagonist, and as such, we do end up kind of, you know, it's it can, it can sometimes be hard for a comedy to have a an effective antagonist and, you know, for us to, for him to make sense as a character, but for us to want to see the, you know, the protagonists, you know, do better than him, win, or, you know, whatever. And, yeah, the... Again, in the first one, the fraternity did very little other than just party loudly. In this, they do more. It's, yeah. And, where in, you know, in the, in the first, a lot of the most hilarious stuff is given away in the trailers. In this, a bunch of stuff is in the trailers, but not in the film. I'd say that maybe half, maybe half of the really memorable stuff in the trailers is just not in the film. And that is too bad, but I I would say that, you know, unlike something like The Amazing Spider-Man 2, where what you get is a different movie, in this, you know, those those bits in the trailers just capture the the craziness of the film you know so yeah you'll note that there are scenes that just aren't there but the scenes that are there are as crazy as that and and unlike the first one there there's there's nothing in the trailers that looks that's that's funny in the trailers but not in the film looking at you Robert De Niro party scene, and like with the first one, I I love every single trailer that has come out for this. Now the main characters are almost as strongly and consistently characterized as in the first one and there is great chemistry again between Rogan Byrne and Efron and some with with Moretz as well now the there is much more of a contrast between the couple and the sorority. They are not too similar the way they were in the first. There's 
there's really in this there there are hints that they are still kind of like you know they there there are still things about them that you connect with young people but where in the first it really felt like they you know i mean yeah in in this there's there's much more you you can really yeah it's it's very much different and you know the the main antagonist is back and now siding with the protagonists as per comedy sequel you know procedure Zac Efron is still you know playing this kind of I, I should briefly say I I don't really know him from anything other than these two movies and then you know I've seen riff track clips on YouTube of you know him in high school musical I I get what he was you know back you know in the Disney days and the you know when when we last saw Teddy he was an Abercrombie and Fitch model and he said he was taking night classes and <laughs> The night classes aren't really mentioned here, but he may not have gotten very long or some, but like he, in this, it turns out that, you know, they've, they've nixed the whole half naked model standing outside of the store thing. So now he has to walk around inside wearing, you know, a sweater and it's really not agreeing with him. And he's like really annoyed that, <laughs> His boss, he's he's the oldest in working in the store by six years, and he had to cover for his boss, who had to go to prom. So that, yeah, that's... <laughs> and... Where... In the first one, there are times where we see Teddy be just... A complete psychopath like at times he'll be this kind of quiet psychopath like early in the first he'll, he'll he asks them to promise that they won't call the cops and he gets like kind of insistent just just a little bit too obsessive about you know when, when you promise when you make a promise to me I expect you to keep it it means a lot to me you know and then he's got this kind of quite like you know this this you know, like like one day this guy is going to murder someone, you know, and then at times he just flips out and he becomes this really, you know, dangerous, volatile kind of psychopath. And both, he's hysterical. He's it's so much fun to to see because it's just it's so, you know, it's the craziness. It's this kind of like, yeah. And they they realized that that was some of the best. And in this, he basically has a meltdown really early on. So he spends the majority of the movie just like completely. He's he's just he's he's fresh off this complete nuclear meltdown he has had a psychotic episode and he's just you know and people have to like talk him down and he's like am, am I do you value me and and it's like you know dude just just put put the knife down let's talk about this and it's just and it's it's so funny and they also they've also made him stupider there's yeah, it's it's just it's <laughs> I, sh I shouldn't give it away, but but yeah, just it's and and he plays he plays both of those, the the psycho and the stupid guy really well. And it's it's so like the psycho is is scary and really funny 
and the stoop guy it's just it's almost endearing it's like how do you dress yourself in the morning because you 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 do not understand even basic concepts and it's just, yeah and and he's again also you know he has this really charming side to him where the in the first one the they riff off each other a lot and like the film will stop dead and we're just watching them the actors riff off each other and you know it's it goes on for excuse me it goes on for far too long it it stops being funny there are scenes where it was never funny at all i am still looking at you robert de niro party scene and i don't know why maybe maybe it just ended up on the cutting room floor but in this it's basically gone like there are, there are times where there are interactions that build and build but they don't really riff when there's there's no lack of like it's it it never stops i i i'm really i really greatly appreciate because that was one of the most annoying things about the first one because it's it's like I get it. It's it's the you know, these are really funny people when they get together they want to riff off each other and they've, you know, this there are other situations where that kind of like when you're when you're rehearsing this stuff, riffing off each other can be really useful. It can get to the real gold. But watching people riff I, maybe it's funny elsewhere, but it's not that funny in the first movie. It it takes too long. They they should have just cut to the the best of the material. The this is more or less the first thing I see Chloe Grace Moretz in, and she plays Shelby and like. Efron in the first, she is the leader of the sorority, and you know, given that you know, that I have seen her in a few other things. I have watched both of her crappy, unnecessary horror remakes of the two thousands: the Amityville Horror and the Eye. You know, children in Hollywood end up in terrible horror movies. It happens. I don't blame her for this. But, yeah. Given, given that Kick-Ass was pretty much her big breakthrough, the, the one where everybody noticed her, she pretty much hit the screen cussing. And it does, you know, like she really just... Yeah, she's she's a lot of fun in this, and you can tell that. Yeah, she came, she she brought her a game. She came to up the the ante and really bring the the crazy gags and yeah. And I don't really know Selena Gomez except. Again, you know, Disney person. For the people who are like, I can't watch this if Selena Gomez, she's not in it very much. And she's not like annoying either. She I'm pretty sure did didn't didn't she get to break her image in Spring Breakers? I only know the only reason I know anything about that movie is because College Humor did a hilarious parody trailer of it where instead of you know former Disney you know Disney stars how about former Disney princesses going crazy and it's it's freaking hilarious 
I feel like I heard that in that, I mean, in that she, you know, she's like a, a college kid who like, or is it high school? Anyway, who like goes on robberies to, so, you know, she got to break in this. She's pretty much playing the, the type of like, you know, smiley and really, you know, she, she, she leads a another sorority, a very, very girly sorority. So she's basically doing that, being being really girly. And yeah, I you know it is it's it is kind of poking fun at that you know of of hers, but it's not really destroying that image either, but yeah, the the joke is that it's really girly and such. And yeah, she's barely in the movie. Now the Jimmy and Paula are still together somehow. And they have gotten even stupider as well. I'm not sure I'd really say that Jimmy in this is one of the... He's still a really good part. In, in the first, he's, you know, some, some said he was the best part. And he really, he was definitely up there. There's, yeah, he's, he's still, he's up there, still. And both couples are very pregnant. So... Yeah, the the fact, although to be fair, Kelly doesn't really, Rose Byrne doesn't really go partying, but Paula, not so much. And Mac and Kelly, you know, their their firstborn is now, you know, I don't know, two two years old. You know, it's it's been two years since the first movie. So, and their their daughter is actually still played by. The, the two twins who played the infant in the first one. Is is that good or is that a little sad? I, I don't quite know. And... The... Like with the first one, the, you know, both the the very young daughter and the the pregnancy are not really part of the story when it you know they they could be I they they talk about it like they they talk about how you know oh this little girl will actually excuse me continue to listen to us unlike the sorority girls next door and you know like the first one yeah, it is the, you know, the, the schlub somehow ended up with the hot girl in the case of both couples. The, the sorority, you know, basically the, the three mains is, you know, we're, we're talking Shelby and then there's this, you know, there's Nora and can't quite remember them, but the the one of one of the the major members of the sorority as well is this Asian who's like she's high a bunch, and yeah, she's just she's she's so funny. It's it's yeah, she she gets some really great moments. And, you know, there's some returning cast, and some of them don't really do much in this. You know, the, the Christopher Mintz Plass, if that's how you pronounce it, he's, he's not in this much. And he doesn't do anything in this movie, but then in the first movie he was in it a bunch, and he also did not do anything. I, I legit, you could, you could cut him entirely out of the movie, and you lose almost nothing. He he contributes almost nothing. He's mentioned several times, and he's present in scenes, but he doesn't do it. And it's not. I don't have anything against him. 
I I bet he can be hilarious. He he I mean, he must be really funny that he got such a big role in you know, such a, in in a comedy like the first one and everybody else that has that much screen time is really funny. Seriously, even Garf is anyway. The 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 dean of the you know the the college dean returns and you know she the the it's it's the same college that you know the the fraternity in the first and then the the sorority in this yeah it's it's both of of the same college and she does get a little bit more and she really she doesn't get to be anywhere near as funny as she is in the first one unfortunately and the real estate agent woman is back and she's really funny here it's like it's not at all like forced and awkward and like what is what is no in this she's really really funny and the you know it in the trailers it looks like there might be some more with you know the the cop and Garfield there's there's really not very much and the you know the 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 daughter is again one of the best you know they'll they'll cut to a reaction of hers or there'll be something with her yeah the I'm not sure the 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 first one also has some really kind of artificial scenes I'm not sure to really say that of this one and you know the and and like scenes where you don't really know the motivation of the characters that's also yeah I'm I don't think there was any in this where I didn't really understand where you didn't really know why someone was doing what they were doing and a lot of the cast get to play both kind of quiet and and you know and also really intense and out there and there's really not a lot in this where you're laughing at something that's just awkward or just laughing at someone being in pain I don't think there was a single scene that just went really loud and obnoxious you, you know the kind of the SNL kind of thing as SNL can sometimes do I should say to you know for for this kind of you know just you know mistaking that for humor being being loud and obnoxious you know that's that's something where yeah they they really do good on that I, well superman does good pre sex snyder and the film isn't really rambly the way the first one was. And in both this and the first, some of the funniest is when it's not like just when we're not just seeing some, you know, but but that there's like, you know. They're, they've edited it or they've filmed it in a certain way. There, you know, there are several scenes in this where slow motion is used incredibly well and makes something much, much funnier. And the 
In the first one, it's kind of hand-waved away why no one else cares about the fraternity partying loudly. In this, they don't even bother with that. I, I thought, I had figured that maybe there would be some, you know, some joke about, you know, oh, we, we can't do that. They're, they're, they're girls. We have to just, let, no, 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 we'll, we'll be called sexist or there'll be, you know, we'll be falsely accused of rape or something, you know, I figured that it would go there. It doesn't, I mean, it goes there. It. I'm not sure there's much with false rape actions. I, I really expected more rape jokes in this than there, you know, but it, especially with how much shocking it goes for, but not, but, but yeah, they, it does put it, I mean, that's basically why the the dean won't like in the first one they set up there's this three strike rule they've had they have one strike against them if they get another strike they go on probation if they get a third strike they just excuse me they you know i forget they disband this fraternity or something and yeah in this the dean just you know throws up her hands and it's, it's it's no I can't do strikes with with the with this sorority so yeah and and that is kind of just yeah they they just needed a, a way to if there were strikes in this one it would they would the movie would be very short because it gets really crazy really early so yeah the and you know like in the first one you know the the girls get to be really you know raunchy as well and and get to you know without it being like you know the they're they're not just like sex objects or something they get to you know yeah not just party loudly, but be really just, yeah, they, they get to really contribute. And, and the movie is genuinely just the first movie again, but with a sorority instead of a fraternity. And, you know, there are, of course, a ton of jokes related to gender as such. And not just that girls can be as bad or, you know, not just bad, but even worse than guys. You know, what is that place that doesn't, you know, the, the wrath of which woman scorned is not quite like, yeah. And... You know, this, most of the time, this understands that sexualizing a woman is not by itself interesting or, you know, or funny. You know, I, I love how in, like, modern comedies, it's like, you know, oh, look, we're sexualizing this woman. <laughs> funny? It's, yeah, and, you know, it, it is a movie that, it, it, it very much wants to offend and, and shock. It very rarely mistakes offense and shock for humor. It, it almost always gets the humor in there as well. where the first one has far too much footage of just partying, which gets old really quick, almost immediately. This one, again, I they must, I don't know if they actually did this, but I, it's, it's almost like they watched the first one, took careful notes, 
about what they did and whether or not it worked every step of the way and they really listen to reviewers because I'm far from the only one who pointed out that the party I, I said in my review of the first one that really we shouldn't have seen the partying before the end and I maintain that of of the first one of, of course there's going to be loud partying but a bunch of the loud partying in the first one we don't actually see we just see that it's keeping the the couple awake you know but then it also has this yeah a lot of, of party footage even very early on when if it just saved it for mostly the ending, the the climax, where, you know, that's the biggest party, of course there's going to be. In this, there's, there's very little just partying footage. And when it's, when we actually see partying, either it is just this, you know, short, you know, where, where you get, okay, this is funny. It's not just watching people party. There's there's an early scene where you see them go. You see the the three girls at the fraternity party, and they. It's it's like the the whole the whole scene is basically just building up this this point that. You know, like I said earlier, the fraternity parties are just for the, you know, it's just about that the girls are there for the frat guys to have sex with. And, yeah, it actually focuses on that. It It's not just, we're not just seeing people party. We're seeing these girls, we're seeing through the eyes of these girls what the the entirety of the party looks like. And... It is uncomfortable, but it's intentionally so. And you really, like, you're sitting there and you're getting as frustrated with the scene as they are. So it's the, it's the movie working instead of us waiting for the movie to get on with it. And, you know, jokes are, of course, you know, stuff like... Uh, you know, involving things like drugs, alcohol, sex, violence, and you know, there's there are a number of different types of comedy. You know, cleverness, silly, verbal comedy. I already mentioned gross out comedy, references, slapstick. The the sorority dresses up the the pledges. There, I, I, there's like a couple of different ones, a couple of different themes they use on them. But one very consistent theme is minions. And that's, that's cheap. And I think the movie knows it, but it really goes for that one. So yeah, every so often it'll cut to a sight gag with, you know, real life minions. And... You know, there there are things where the film is just really, you know, uncomfortable, just offensive and, and such. But it tended to be funnier. There, there's less, like, there, there are definitely jokes that go over the line and really, like, like majorly cross the line to try to offend but also get a laugh and there are definitely some that are just only offensive not funny but then there are also a bunch that are really really funny and there's there's not so much racism there's there are some like excuse me there there are there there are ethnic jokes and there's still some you know some humor derived from like 
and I, I guess child abuse might be going a little far, but that basic theme, you know, if if they swear in front of the the daughter, and there's this running gag about how the the girl keeps finding the they, that that she keeps finding Kelly's dildo, and she's running around, and you know she's dressed it up as a princess in some scenes, and like it's just, it's it's in place of her having a doll, basically that she's got this yeah. Now. This is one of those really utterly unnecessary sequels and as as such and as of like of sequels that are remakes of the first one right from the start I was like this actually doesn't look that bad and in some ways looks better than the first one, and in some ways it is better than the first one. I, ultimately, the first one is technically the better movie, but at, at the end of the day, this almost kind of shouldn't be a good movie, because it really ties down the 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 whole affair and really takes a lot of the potential out of it you have to go crazy with it and yeah the the fact that this does makes it i i would definitely the, the first one is definitely the better movie but this is by far the funnier movie and you know i mean with the the moment that a a comedy becomes part you know that that it gets like sequels and such you you do usually get like you know diminishing returns kind of thing going and you know this is very much more of the same and you know it's it's that kind of thing where as a sequel it you know it tries to go bigger and most of the time it does end up better in in this and the you know where in in the first there's this theme of like responsibility and growing up and the couple kind of want to prove that they're still cool that they haven't you know they're they're not boring yet and yeah that that isn't really in, in this the you know the poster or at least one of the posters for this is a parody of the Civil War posters I, I quite like it and others have pointed out that you know this does end up really really socially aware of a, a comedy and that yeah, it's it's really unexpected at first, but it it gets there. And Now, Film Brain has pointed out that the, you know, the, the, the female characters in this are kind of cliched, and it's basically just they're, they're really socially active, and they text a lot. And... For a while of this, Teddy kind of mentors the sorority because he doesn't really have anything else. You know, he it's 
He's now had a few years and he's still stuck at Abercrombie and Fitch. And he, yeah, he's not really, he doesn't, he's not going anywhere. Nothing is really changing for the better in his life, particularly. And yeah, it's, you know, that's something he could do. He he ran the frat and that went well. So he you know, he tries to help the the sorority and for a while that goes well. And it's actually he <laughs> he has not really forgiven the, you know, forget what we saw, excuse me, at the very end of the first, he has not really forgiven Mac and Kelly for, excuse me, for the events of the first movie, and, excuse me, before the sorority move in, he briefly meets the yeah, the the couple again, and you know they're like, what are what are you doing here? And you know at that time he's 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 just helped the sorority to that they're going to be moving in, and he knows this, and he he knows that the you know and and he knows that they're going to party loudly, and so he's like you'll see and he just kind of scampers off and and looks back and like <laughs> you know and and then the the you know when the couple realize it you know they they walk in and realize that it's a sorority and then he's there and he's like i told you you'd see and they're like what, what are you talking remember earlier i said that you would see and they're and they're like I think some of this is just going on in your mind and it's just yeah yeah it's it's Teddy really is the you know his his whole journey is one of the most compelling parts of this both as far as comedy and as far as actually kind of like he's he's a much more yeah he's he's a more well-rounded character and more like yeah and in the first one i mean he was basically he was he was kind of stupid and he had the the kind of psycho thing going on and the the goal with the fraternity but in this, it really is like, yeah, you know, his, his, I mean, the, the, the ending of the first one did kind of just hand wave away, you know, he'll, he'll, he'll be okay, I guess. I don't, do, do we care enough? The, the writers weren't entirely sure if they, you know, if we were supposed to care or not whether Teddy would be okay after the events and in this it kind of takes that seriously and it's actually really yeah it, you know he's he's one of the major you know drivers of the plot and the I want to say his name is Pete Franco, Dave Franco. As was in the air in the first one, he is in fact gay. And in this, he's like, yeah, he, he has a, a, a boyfriend and it's, yeah, I, I, I really, really thought that there would be like that 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 would be more of a joke, but it kind of isn't 
the movie plays that, if you'll permit me saying so, straight. It's, it's, there are jokes around that, but it's not really a joke that he's gay or that he has a boyfriend or the, this whole, yeah, that's actually kind of, that's just sweet and it's kind of, that's, that's part of what happens, like, at, at the start of the film, this boyfriend proposes to Pete, and they're going to, you know, it's, it's going, yeah, they're, they're making a future, and that kind of means that, I want to say Darren, I think it's Darren, not like Daryl, but Darren, Darren, the fiancé, is now going to be moving in with Pete. And that kind of means there's not necessarily a lot of room for Teddy, who is living there, because he can't really afford his own place. So, yeah, and, and that's how he ends up working for the sorority. It's kind of... There's a little bit of the movie where it actually can, where, where it really leers at all these, you know, college-aged young women, but it almost feels like those were left in by accident, because, and that's, when you, when you watch the trailers, and also just this idea, you know, oh, crazy partying, you know, sorority girls. You kind of expect there to be a lot of sexualization of them, that this is going to be a big thing, that... And it, it really isn't. I was very pleasantly surprised by that. It... Yeah. And... There's some, like, police brutality jokes, and it's like, you know, oh, but the cops here are black, and that's, you know, and it's like, that's not funny, because it's not just white cops, you know, <laughs> hashtag all, yeah, you know, there are black cops who abuse their power as well, it's not, it's not just the non-ethnic cops and the the feminism does at times become kind of preachy there are a lot of like jokes and just kind of conversations about like is is this or that sexist and you know c can it be and and that kind of thing and there are you know clearly a lot of stuff has been cut or cut significant cut, cut down significantly you know very much based on what, you know, they, they filmed a ton of stuff and then, you know, showed it to, you know, some, some early screenings and then the stuff that got the, the biggest laughs, they kept in and you can really tell, you know, some of it really awkwardly just kind of left their... And Film Brain points out that while the writers, you know, they, they know how frats work. You know, the, the first film is very much made by people who were in frats and kind of know how. It's, it's almost kind of this, like... The, the male characters who are like, you know, like Seth Rogen's character and the, the friend Jimmy, 
they were in a fraternity as well. So it's it's kind of like the people who, you know, it's it's post frat versus current frat. It's and and they, you know, they recognize the you know, and, and they that is also a part of why they understand and are you know they they understand some of the things that the other side is doing and how to deal with it and such. And yeah, the the writers don't really know how sororities work or what college girls care about. And you know, it's and thus it's it's like you know you know there there are definitely too many cooks. This this thing has five writers. And yeah, it's it's five guys trying to write women and you know because women can't write funny it's it's ridiculous how it seems like the most obvious thing in the world bring in some some great comedic you know some some women who are great comedic writers that's it the first in in both this and the first movie they get Women can be funny. There are, there are way too many people who won't admit that. But even in the, you know, in the first movie there are fewer female characters, but the female characters are hilarious, like the guys are. The fact that there are more guys doesn't mean that the, the, the women in the first one are some of the most standout. You know, Rose Byrne, phenomenal in, you know, in, in both of these, but in the first... She really gets to do some especially amazing stuff. And I, I don't know why they couldn't close the other gap in that, yeah, just bring in, bring in some women who know, you know, so, so that they don't know how women really think of the kind of, you know, the, the conflicts they face and such. And make sure that those women are really, really funny and they can write good. Yeah. And like the first one, the you know, there are a number of scenes where it feels like, okay, this is the final scene. This is this must be the end. And then it kind of just keeps going. I've reviewed other parts of this franchise, the links are in the description box. Please comment, thumbs up, and subscribe for more content.